everyone, Stuart here from Fairlight Instruments. It's time to have a look at the new Fairlight CMI iPad and iPhone apps. There's two versions of the app. The standard version gives you all of the Series 2 CMI 8-bit sounds. The sounds are only 16k each, but you'll be pretty surprised at the quality, especially if you plug into a decent amp. There's over 500 sounds included in the standard version, uh, including classics like these. Play them in 8 voice polyphony using the on-screen keyboard or for more serious playing you can connect an external MIDI keyboard Once you do this it means you can use the app as a Fairlight sound module The Pro upgrade gives you an extra 100 plus of the best Fairlight CMI Series 3 sounds which are longer and a 16 bit You'll be able to edit sequences, import your own samples and a whole lot more Let's get started on the iPad app The iPhone app is basically the same except you need better eyes and smaller fingers to use it so first up, authentic 1980s green screen and an original 8 inch floppy that was used to load all the data into the Fairlight. And then you get this screen which is a photo of the back of the CMI Series 2 and it's time for a puzzle. Let's see if you can work out how to select the correct power supply for Australia which is 240 volts. Hopefully not too hard, you'll see some interesting effects if you get it wrong. Apparently the original CMIs might have caught fire if you got the voltage wrong. But for now let's just select 240 volts, uh, turn the key and get the app going. So then you get the real loading sequence of the original CMIs with um, disc noises and, and about the same time delay that it took to load way back in 1980. Uh, now we come to the main menu, which is a cut down version of the original CMI called page one. Let's quickly look at each of these pages. Page two, which gives you uh, file access. Page three uh, lets you modify and play instruments. Page R lets you compose and play songs. Then there's Settings, History and Help, which are pretty obvious. Uh, so let's go into page 2 first up. Now it's probably a good time to have a quick look at the, uh, the terminology used in the app. So there's three basic ideas that you've got to pick up on. And they're sort of laid out here from right to left. So a voice is a single sound. An instrument is a collection of up to eight sounds. And a song is an eight track pattern based uh, sequence that uses a single instrument. So if you touch a song, you'll see that it shows the instrument that that song uses and the voices that the instrument contains. Underneath song and instrument, you'll also get a button which takes you to the associated editor for each of those. So page R for a song, page 3 for an instrument. You also get a plus button which lets you add a new song or instrument. So let's listen to a song now just by touching page R. We wait for it to load and then you get an authentic recreation of the world's first ever sequence of software, uh, the famous page R. Um, so let's click play and you should hear it. Basically what we've got in page R, you see that see the eight tracks down the side of the screen? Uh, each voice listed on the left and the notes laid out in the main section. In the standard version you can't edit the song, so any, any edit features that you try will ask you to upgrade to Pro, uh, which of course we suggest you do. So let's go back to page two and select an instrument this time. So the instrument page shows the eight voices that make up what's called an instrument in the CMI. Uh, you'll see them listed on the left in the all section. You can select an individual voice as well using the numbers one to eight. So if we select four, you get an on-screen keyboard that lets you play the sound. So from here you can also touch the voice name, which will take you to the voice page. Now you get a waveform display um, and some further details about the sound. One of the coolest features of the original CMI was page D, which gives you a 3D picture of the sound. So let's go into page D, and you'll see, if I lift up the iPad and tilt it, um, an image that shows the waveform of the sound, but also showing how the waveform changes over time, so from front to back. The cool thing is that you can uh, use the tilt of the iPad or iPhone to view the sound from different angles. Tilt front to back to go kind of over the sound and tilt left to right like this to view the sound from an angle. So you also get help up in the top right hand corner of, of pretty much all the pages. So let's go out of page D, back to page 2, uh, then page 1. The final thing we'll look at is um, in the info or settings sections as well as a bit of detail about the app and the settings for the sound effects volume, there's a floppy disk success rate setting. 
Uh, floppies weren't very reliable in the 1980s, and uh, so to recreate the good old days, you can change what the success rate is for each access to a file. So let's change it all the way down to 50%. Then if we go to page 2, with any luck, uh, you'll notice that instead of loading the file, you get the sound of the drive trying to read the floppy right there. So anyway, you can fix to fix the problem, you need to shake the device. Um, just something to make life a bit more interesting and take you back. So that's about it for now. In the next tutorial, we'll have a look at how to import and make your own instruments in the Pro version, and also how to edit your own sequences in PageR. See you then.